First off, I want to give all glory and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Baraka Thumb, okay? Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father in the Hebrew language, the Hebrew language, our original language before we was brought over here on slave ships, okay? Yahweh Shah, that is the Son of Man, the true Messiah. Yahweh Shah is his name in the Hebrew language, okay? That's Better right. on here as Christ, all right? So we want to... We want to give a shout out to a, a camp, WFI. We are the Watchmen, the Watchmen of Israel. Okay. We want to give a shout out to the Cleveland camp that's just opening today. So we have a new camp. Okay. So we got the Baltimore camp, Pittsburgh camp, New Jersey, Philly camp, Detroit camp, and now we have a Cleveland camp just started today. So we want to thank the Lord Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shabbat the Thumb for that good news. Okay. Because we're growing like wildfire. And there's prophets and servants all over the world that's waking up to this truth. And we out here to teach you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that you are the biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to dump down the lies that was taught to us. Because a lot of people believe that the Caucasian man is Christ. Okay? Christ was not a Caucasian at all. It's documented and written in the Bible. So this is what we're going to touch on today, okay? We're going to get to the basics and we're going to bring this thing out. I'm in the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1, Hebrew. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High God. Of the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. This is the commandments of the... This is the book of the commandments of the Most High God. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High God. What else? And the law that... And the what? And the law that endureth forever. And the law that endures forever. The children of Israel was given law, statutes, and commandments. We was not given no religion. Understand, these religions speak lies and to keep our people deceived. But we know who we are. We come out here to teach our people the truth that's documented in the Bible. So this is the book of the law. Let me get the book of 1st Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48, Hebrew. All right? This is the book of the law. The law, statutes, and commandments. Read the book of 1st Maccabees, chapter 3, and verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. And these people may open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Where the heathen sought to paint the likeness of their images. The heathen, the heathen, the heathen, Israel Caucasian, they're one group out of the heathen nations. And they painted the likeness of their image in our book. This is the book of the law where the heathen sought to paint the likeness of their image. Read. They brought also the priest's garments and the first fruit and the tithes and the Nazarites that they were stirred up. That's it on there. Okay, let me get the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Okay? Revelation 1, verse 14. All right? Because we out here to dumb down all lies. You got this white Caucasian man claiming to be the true Messiah. That's a false notion because guess what? Whoever believes in that Caucasian man coming back is all going to get put to death by the true black Messiah that's described in the Bible. And now we're about to read it right now. Read what you got, Hebrew. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. The true Messiah, the depiction of the true Messiah, his head and his hair were white like wool, wool, wool type textured hair, wool, read. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. 29, 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire. So the true Messiah, he has white woolly hair, and his eyes are as a flame of fire. But let's see why. The book of Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. His what? His eyes shall be red with wine. Revelations. His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes, the whites of his eyes shall be red with wine. Read. And his feet, the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. And the feet. John the Revelator gave us the picture of the true Messiah. When he looked down at his feet, he looked down at the true Messiah's feet. And what color were they? Fine brass. His feet like unto what? Fine brass. 
as if they burned in a furnace. So it's the true depiction in the Messiah, his feet, it's the same color as the rest of his body. Like as in fine brass, as if it's been burnt in a furnace. That's a very dark color. God is not describing a Caucasian with blue eyes and blonde hair. That's the lie that we out here to dumb down. We out here to dump down all lies today because you're going to get the truth today because that's what we out here for. We're going to give you the 100% truth. Give me the book, uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 14, 2 Hebrew. Now let's find out what color is the real Jews that's documented in the Bible, okay? What color are the real Jews of ancient times still today, right? Because there's a lot, so many lies going on, we don't know which way to look or nor which way to go. Read what you got, Hebrew. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2, Judah mourning. Judah is in mourning. The real Jews are in mourning, right? And the gates thereof uh, languish. And the gates languish. The gates is our leaders. We have no true leaders today. Read. They are black. What color are the real Jews? They are black. Read that again from the top Hebrew. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black. What color is the real Jews? They are black. Let me get the book of That's Job. That's right. The 30 verse 30. Job 30 verse 30. Because we're going to bring out color in the Bible. Because yes, it's documented. But a lot of these Christian churches and a lot of these pastors will not read it to you. They won't even read you lies because they get paid to do so. Read. The book of Job, chapter 30, and verse 30. My skin is black. What color is Job's skin? My skin is black upon me. Job's skin, our forefather, our prophet Job, skin is black upon me. Give me the book of King of Solomon. Psalms of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5, Hebrew. And let's see what color was Solomon, King Solomon, right? We're bringing out the color in the Bible that's documented in the Holy Bible. Read what you got, Hebrew. The book of Song of Solomon, chapter 1, and verse 5. I am black, but comely. What did King Solomon say? I am black, but comely. I am black, but comely. Comely means beautiful. I'm black and beautiful. The same way we say I'm black and I'm proud. But this is our ancestors, our forefathers, King Solomon. He said, I'm black but comely. Comely means beautiful. I'm black and I'm beautiful. So where did you get these white Caucasian men from talking about he's God? Because like they got the whole world to see. But guess what? Isn't that Satan's job? Isn't the adversary's job is to deceive the whole world? But guess what? We know what's going on right now. Give me the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 2. Right? 2 and 4, so I 2 verse 4. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4. We're going to get on this man today, right? We're going to get on the adversary today. Because we everybody needs to be in the know. Because guess what? World War III is right around the corner. And a lot of our people just walking around like ain't nothing going to happen. Read what you got, Hebrew. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse 4. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Now what person, what people on this planet exalt himself as God? It's the Caucasian man that you think is Christ, the Messiah, Yahawashah. Read that again, Hebrew. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter two, and verse four, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. Now what? For that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So this Caucasian man, he has put himself in the power of God seat, the Messiah seat, claiming to be God. That's what he's done and deceived a whole lot of people. But the Bible says this man deceived the whole world. Understand that thing. Read that from the top, Hebrew. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, and verse 4. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. But we know that this Caucasian man is not God. He can't be the son of God. Now that the Bible just picks a black man with white woolly hair. There's only two types of people that got two types of depictions of hair on this planet, right? Now one is stringy hair, but you got stringy or woolly, right? There's two manner of people. 
One people got stringy hair, whether it be your Chinese, your Japanese, your Caucasians, right, your Arabs, whether it be your, your Iraqis, and then you got the bully type texture people, right, who are Negroes, right, African Americans, better known as the children of Israel, God's holy people. But God said he's going to put his people in slavery because they didn't listen to Moses. Let me get that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 1, Hebrew. Let's see why the children of Israel failed. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, 28 verse 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently, if you will listen diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments. To do what? To do all his commandments. To do what? To do all, all his commandments. commandments. Which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. Now this is Moses out of the wilderness when he brought the children of Israel across the Red Sea, right? He said, if we will listen diligently, if we will listen to the voice of the Lord thy God and follow his law, statutes, and commandments, that the children of Israel will be set on high. Now give me 15. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it should come to pass if thou wilt not hearken. Now Moses is saying, if we, the children of Israel will not listen to the voice of the Lord thy God. Let's see what will happen. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, that all these curses, that all these what? That all these curses, that all these what? That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake you. That all these curses shall come upon you and overtake you. Curses is a bad thing according to the Bible. Let me get the book of Daniel chapter nine verse 10 Hebrew. Right? So this is the ultimatum that Moses gave the children of Israel. He said if the, the children of Israel would listen to the Most High God, to observe to do all his statutes and his commandments, that we, the children of Israel, will be set on high. But if the children of Israel will not hearken, they will be cursed. So let's find out if they listen or did the children of Israel listen or not listen. The book of Daniel, chapter 9 and verse 10, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our The children of Israel did not obey the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he sent before us by his servants, the prophets. So we did not listen. Read. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. The what? The curse is poured upon us. The what? The curse is poured upon us. What did God say? The curse is poured upon us. What did Moses say? The curse is poured upon us. So the curse is poured upon the children of Israel. Now, how can we find out that we are the biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of? Beautiful to Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 16 in Hebrew. Because guess what? The children of Israel are cursed. Now we're about to find out what curses did the Lord put on the children of Israel to find out and identify who are the true biblical Israelites that the Bible speaks of. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. What the Bible say? Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Read. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. And what? Cursed shalt thou be in the field. So cursed shalt thou be in the city and cursed shall we be in the field. So the children of Israel are going to be cursed in the city. How is the children of Israel cursed in the city? How? Because they're in the low states, they're in the ghettos, right? That's why the children of Israel are cursed. They cursed in the city and cursed in the field. How was we cursed in the field? The sugar cane field, the tobacco field, right? Right? How was the children of Israel cursed in the field? The cotton field? These are all things that was in biblical times. These are history. The Bible ain't nothing but a black history book. That's what it is, right? A black history book. Everything we need to know is in the Holy Bible. It's in the scriptures. Give me the book of 32, Hebrew. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters 
shall be given unto another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fall with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. Read that again from the top, people. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now, throughout history, who did this happen to? Throughout history, who daughters? Whose sons was given unto another people? Who did that happen to? Did that happen to the Caucasian that be claiming to be Christ? That be claiming to be that God is white? That be claiming to be that the angels is white? That be claiming to be that all prophets in the Bible are white? These are curses. What curse do you know the Caucasian going through? But I know the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, I know the curses that's on them, that the Bible speaks of. Read that again from the top, Hebrew. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Throughout slavery, when our daughters and sons was taken from us, we did not have might to get our people back, right? When the Chinese did the same thing in the 10th dynasty, the Chinese had us in slavery as well. Don't forget that. It's called the Silk Road Slave Train. The Japanese and Chinese had the children of Israel in slavery as well, right? Don't forget the Arabs, the transatlantic slave train, right? Don't forget these things. Don't forget our history. But you know, guess what? We go to the schools that this Caucasian, these devils that put us in, and we learn our history through them. So a lot of us don't really truly know our own history. And a lot of our people don't even care to know our history. But you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45, people. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee. All these what? All these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Now these curses are going to be put on the children of Israel until we be destroyed. As we not destroyed as a people, do we not know who we are? How many times our nationalities have changed? From Afro-American, African-American, Negro, color. Why do our nationality keep changing? Because guess what? The adversary do not want us to know that we are the chosen people. But guess what? In the Bible, in the last days, God said he's going to put the spirit in upon his servants and prophets, and he's going to teach the truth. So we will know who we are in the last days. That's why we know that this is the last days. And just look around. We're in the year 2020. Ever since we came into 2020, it's been a downfall of all countries. A downfall, right? The stock market. Y'all forgot about that already. The stock market is hurting. COVID hit, right? And, and look, we still got places boarded up in America. This is supposed to be the richest country on earth. But guess what? They're broke. They're filed bankruptcy, what, three years ago? But y'all walking around like this place isn't going to be destroyed. It's documented in the Bible that this place is going to be destroyed. This is the last war that we're coming into. So it's best to turn back to your true biblical nationality and turn back to the true black Messiah while you have time before it's too late. Because guess what? Those who don't want to know your nationality, you will be destroyed because you ain't going to know who you are when the Messiah comes. So a lot of people think that when the Messiah come, when the sky crack, they're going to get on their knees and pray, and the Messiah is going to take them with you. No, you must be keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments that was given to us by Moses. If we was cursed by God by not keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments, the only way to come up out of this situation is to turn back to his laws, statutes, and commandments. Read what you got, Hebrew. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, and verse 29. But if from... Hence, the slacking, but if from this thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If you seek the Lord, you will find him. If you seek him, you will find him. You children of Israel, because God ain't coming back for everybody. He's not coming back for the heathen nation. 
He's coming back to destroy the heathen nation because they the ones put his chosen people in slavery. They put their hands on the true biblical Israelites and that God don't like that thing. That's what he's coming back to destroy. He's coming back for bloodshed. He's not coming back for all love. Come down that lot this day. Read what you got. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou even in the what? Even in the latter days, even in the last days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient, you must Lord. be obedient to the Most High God. How can you be obedient by reading His Word, by sticking your face in the Holy Bible and doing His law, statutes, and commandments? Read. Uh, and, and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swear unto them. Because it was a covenant made, right? Genesis 17, verse 18. It was a covenant made. Because we all came from Abraham. But there was a chosen seed, and we're going to read that in the Bible to let you know that everybody is not chosen. Okay, read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, and verse 18. And Abraham said unto the Most High God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And so Ishmael was the firstborn of Abraham. Ishmael was, Ishmael was Abraham's first son. But let's see what the Most High said. And the Most High God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed. Because Sarah was an old and up in age. She didn't think she could have a child, right? She didn't think she could bear children. But Abraham went to the Lord and asked, read. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Isaac, Isaac, and what else? And I will establish my covenant with him. What did the Lord say? And I will establish my covenant with him. So there's two sons that came out of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael. But Isaac, the Lord said he would establish his covenant with him, which make Isaac the chosen seed. Read that again to the top people. And the Most High God, Yahweh said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call him Isaac. So, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant. For what? For an everlasting covenant. For an everlasting covenant. Covenant. So this covenant will not be broken. Read. And with his seed after him. And the seed after him. Right? Give me the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 6. And the covenant after him. Right? The covenant after him. So what we're going to do is, we're going to see, because we all come out of Abraham. A lot of people say everybody's Israelites. But guess what? He said his son after him. Who was the son after? Uh... Who was your son after um, Isaac? Isaac? Jacob. Isaac, yeah. Jacob had 12 sons. That's when you get the 12 tribes of the house of Israel because we established that covenant. That co covenant is for us. Read what you got. Romans 9, 6. The book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 6. Not as though the word of the Most High God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. We are, everybody is not of Israel. That is come from is, Israel. Because guess what? Everybody comes from, from Abraham. But Abraham had a chosen seed and he had a not chosen seed, right? We come from the chosen seed, but let's see what the Bible says. That is, Salakia, the book of Romans chapter nine and verse seven. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children? What did the Bible say? Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. In what? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So the true biblical Israelites come from Isaac. He, Isaac had a son, right? Called Jacob. That was his name. And Jacob wrestled with an angel. And the angel said, your name would no longer be Jacob, but Israel. And he had 12 sons, and that's when we get the biblical 12 tribes of Israel today. We are the, the people of the book. We, the covenant belongs to us. Give me that in Romans chapter 9, verse 4, Hebrew. The book of Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom 
pertaineth the adoption? Who pertaineth the adoption? Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? What else? And the glory and the covenant and the what? And the covenant and the what? And the covenant and the giving of the law. The children of Israel was given of the law. The children of Israel can't say everybody, but the children of Israel. Let me get that in the book of Psalms, chapter nine, one forty-seven, nineteen. 147.19. Because the law, we was given the law. The laws was not given to everybody. Understand that thing. The laws is not given to everybody. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 147 and 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. He did what? He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes, and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. He hath not dealt so with any other nation. But what else? What? And as for his judgments, they have not known them. And for his what? And for his and, like, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. So the other nations, the heathen nations, do not know God's judgments. Understand that thing, that the heathen nations do not know God's judgment. That's why they commit all these wicked crimes on this earth and don't get no consequences for them. That's why. But guess what? It's a consequence for the children of Israel. It's always a consequence for you. And guess what? You were given God's laws. You are God's chosen people. You need to understand that. You need to repent, turn back to the law, statutes, and commandments that was given to us by our forefather Moses. And repent. Give me that in Acts chapter 319. The book of Acts chapter 319. Because we out here for repentance. Our people are all over the place. Right? Read what you got. The book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. What did the Bible say? Repent ye therefore and be converted. Repent and be converted. Why? That your Repent and be converted. That Why would the Bible say that? That your sins may be blotted out. That your what? That your sins may be blotted out. Read the book of Psalms 19 verse 7. That your sins, repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out, right? But you children of Israel, you have a chance to repent. Do not all nations have a chance to repent. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The what? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The law is what changes you. But a lot of people like to change according to this world, so they say I'm a good person. But they ain't going nowhere in the Bible. Meanwhile, you get saved by the Bible. You get heaven by the Bible. You get eternal life by this word. So that's what we ought to come back to and serve the true God of Israel. Right? That's what we ought to be doing as a people. But a lot of our people like falling. There's a lot of folly going on across the street right now, uh, right? 